Good morning and welcome once again for a brief faith reflection. I'm here in my office and this reflection is based on the solemnity of the Sacred Heart. At the outset, it must be pointed out that no amount of preaching or commentary on the mystery of the Sacred Heart can ever take the place of our own reflection on the reality of God's unfathomable love and mercy. Meditate on the first and second readings for today's Mass. See the description of the tender love of God in the reading from Hosea and bask in that love for a while. Also take time to reflect on the depth of God's love for us in the second reading from Ephesians 3. The pandemic is resurging in a serious way and we must do everything in our power to promote and protect life. I am alone here in my office, having gotten used to setting up the um, cell phone and the computer so that I do not need to wear the face mask. But once I step outside, the mask becomes essential as it serves to protect others. <coughs> I beg your pardon. And that is what today's feast is all about. Bringing comfort to others and making life bearable for them. This year, the Gospel reading for the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus comes from the 19th chapter of John. It is a familiar text calling to mind the piercing of the side of Christ. Whereas John 19.34 describes the piercing of the side of Jesus, we remember from elsewhere in the New Testament that when Jesus died, the veil in the temple was torn, not from bottom to top, but from top to bottom. That veil was approximately 20 meters high. A human being could never have torn it. God destroyed that curtain. And for those who look at the texts, um, uh, the text that I uh, will post together with this video clip, will see the references there. Why is this significant? The tearing of the curtain. What was behind the veil? What was God destroying when he destroyed it? The curtain screened what was known as the most holy place in the temple, the Holy of Holies a place which represented heaven itself. Only the high priest could enter that place once a year to make a sin offering, and this after he himself was purified. Leviticus 16 contains all the rubrics for the Day of Atonement. In the New Testament, the book of Hebrews makes three references to the veil or the curtain, culminating in Hebrews 10, verse 20, where the veil in the temple and the veil of the flesh of Christ are brought together. The implication was that when the veil of his flesh was torn, the true Holy of Holies, namely the heart of Christ, was made manifest. At the death of Christ, the curtain which separated humanity from the divine was dramatically done away with. Holiness is now achieved through the the death of Christ. Atonement for sins is achieved through the death of Christ. Our accessibility to the divine presence is mediated through the saving death. The ninth chapter of Hebrews describes and interprets this for us. This might be a good chance to read that chapter. The emphasis in all this is on the mercy of God. All this involves ritual, because through ritual we participate in the healing process. Ritual opens up for us possibilities of ongoing dialogue and engagement with the divine. The sacred heart is none other than the merciful heart of God. Let us pray. Lord our God, during this time we carry many burdens. The coronavirus pandemic 
has hurt the human community in many ways. There is uncertainty, fear, illness, and economic hardship. The body of Christ is affected, infected, and inflicted. But we know that where the body is, the head is also there. Today's feast tells us that through his sacrifice on Calvary, we are saved. Father, we thank you for the gift of so great a Redeemer. Help us to realize that no matter how heavy the burden, he is right there with us. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you, your homes and your family, and remain with you forever. Stay safe. Stay well. Stay prayerful.